And now on the line is Michelle Morphy from Social Justice Ireland. Michelle, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, Michelle, I read quotes from yourself and Sean Healy in Monday's Irish Times, and I understand that you launched a report uh, uh, on the last few days also. For any of our listeners today and uh, listen to us on t- to Near FM who did not read that article, Michelle, c- could you could you tell them what yourselves in Social Justice Ireland are calling for at the moment, and uh, w- w- what you and Sean said in the article? Yes, absolutely. So the article, I suppose, it was looking at the impact of the cost of living, um, who's most impacted, and then what do you need to bridge the gap for those people? So, you know, what, for example, what kind of increase in social welfare rates are you looking at? So what the, what the report shows is that it's the bottom 20% in the income distribution, so the bottom 20% of households, you know, so people who are in low-paid jobs, people who are in a caring role, who have a disability, who are unemployed or lone parents, that's a, that are older people living alone. So that's kind of the bulk of the, those households. They're the people who are most impacted by the rising cost of living because they, they, they spend most of their income. They don't have spare income to save and they spend more of their income on food and things like electricity and gas and, and energy than, than uh, other households. So they, they're really hardest hit by the rising costs. So they're, what we're saying is they're the groups you need to focus on. And so far, any of the measures announced by governments, while they're welcome, the two thirds of the measures went on the universal um, solution, so cut to the excise duty on diesel, changes to VAT, and an energy credit. That's where most of the money actually went. It didn't go towards targeting low income households. And what we're saying is you need to target those groups. And if you're looking at, you know, targeting people on social welfare, then you need to look at the gap between where social welfare is and the, a benchmark against average earnings. Okay, Michelle, what are yourselves and Social Justice Ireland hearing from your members and a lot of the public as to the effect that the big increase in the cost of living is if ha- is having on them? Um, well, it's having a, a significant impact on them, you know, because prices are increasing on a weekly, sometimes on a, on a daily basis. And these are households who've already cut back. They don't have any, you know, they don't have anything else that's, that they can cut back on because welfare hasn't welfare didn't increase in budget 2020 or 21 and while welfare rates were increased by five euros last in the the last budget that was only half of what was needed and there's a gap between welfare rates social welfare rates and um the benchmark which they, they should be linked to which is 27 and a half percent of average earnings and that gap now it was just under 20 euros last year that's why we asked for a 10 euros increase in social welfare to close the gap over two budgets but that gap darren has grown to 27 euros a week that's how much social welfare rates would have to rise to bridge that gap and you know that that gap is going to is only going to get wider because prices keep increasing. And that's why we, and we've said this before, but we continue to say to governments that any resources that you have available to deal with the cost of living prices, they have to be focused on the people who need the most, the, 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 the households in the bottom 20%. That's where you need to put your money. So you need to focus your money on supporting people on social welfare payments and supporting people in low-paid jobs. Um, I believe as well that the CPI in Ireland, like in other countries, does not give an accurate reflection of the rise in the cost of living. Do you agree with that? Yes, because it underestimates the impact on certain households. So it underestimates the inc- impact on lower income households and on, on rural households. Because, for example, if there's a rise in fuel costs, rural households are you know are more impacted because they don't have access to public transport you, you generally you're not able to walk to the shop or to the school or wherever it is your job so yeah and if you don't have access to public transport you have to get in your car there's no way around it but what unfortunately the cpi is it's set up at the moment it underestimates that so it's actually you know even it's an under calculation of what the impact is on those households so 
you know, I'd certainly agree with that analysis. Okay, I believe as well that um, it doesn't include like years like the, 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 the decades ago, the CPI included uh, that there was more of a range of things that were measured, whereas mm-hmm. now it's been cut back over the years. So. Uh, I believe that's the case anyway. Okay, uh, you believe we should have a new social contract, don't you, Michelle? Yes, so, I mean, absolutely. And, you know, that's what was promised in the programme for government as well, um, a new social contract. You know, to look at what what is, what is, you know, what sort of standard of living can people expect? And by standard of living, I don't just mean income. I mean, you know, what sort of how, you know, access to housing, for example, access to healthcare. So being able to, you know, see your GP when you need to see your GP. Can you get a place for your child in childcare? You know, is there a public transport service available to you? If you're an older person, for example, living alone, can you access home health hours if you need them? You know, those are the kind of services we're talking about and things like broadband to support uh, remote working. Do we have a sufficient level of those services and income? And if we don't, then what level does it need to get to? And then how how are you going to, to pay for it as well? Because obviously all of this has to be paid for. But, you know, people's standard of living, you know, it, it's not rising, it's falling, particularly for people on lower incomes. And the problem for that group is that the real value of what their money will buy is falling every week. And, you know, they're in a very, very difficult situation. And if we don't look at supporting them now, they're only going to fall further into poverty. And the gap between the rich poor gap will actually just continue to grow and inequality will continue to grow as well. When we talk about a new social contract, uh, Michelle, has there ever been a social contract in Ireland in terms of the people as a whole? Well, I suppose it's it's implicit in that we all contribute at certain different stages of our lives. So you're either a net beneficiary or contributor. So you know you're either in education, you're in employment, so you're you're contributing in terms of income tax or revenue or you're an older person, so, you you know, you've contributed throughout the years and now you're entitled to the state pension. So it's across the life cycle. I suppose people expect that, you know, if you participate in society, so you vote in the elections, you know, you get involved in your community, you're supporting the economy through employment, or you're, for example, you're caring for relatives, you're caring for children. You know, if you're participating in all of that, then you will expect that the state, you know, through the revenue that it collects provides the services that you need at different stages through the life cycle and provides them at a level that is acceptable you know to you and it supports everyone and supports everyone's living standards and the problem is obviously that in some ways it's broken because certainly in terms of access to housing health care child care even in terms of inequality you know services are not being delivered to the standard that people are expect well, just for anyone who's interested, all the information is on our website there, socialjustice.ie, and we launched this report uh, yes, on Wednesday, the 20th of April, and so the video of that launch is up there if anyone's interested in the presentations and I suppose some greater detail on any of the issues there, things like housing, healthcare, climate, all of those issues are addressed in the report.